what's what's new with you? What's been going on? Man, new music, new album, new tour, always keeping the routine in place. You know what I mean? So I got, you know, top of the year. This is like the past five years. We went out on tour in the January. So, you know, it's something to look forward to, not only for the people, but for me too. You know what I mean? And it's accompanied by new music. I did some Afro R and B fusion. Okay. You were out in South Africa, on huh? My next project. Yeah, I did it in South Africa. Yeah. Um, and did a, a, a writing camp out there. Mm. So man, all the production, all the songwriting, everything was taking place in Cape Town, South Africa. Love okay, that. I I, I want to start there, man, because like, <laughs> what type of why did you even choose to yeah. go there and have that sound influence your music now? So when I got off tour the last time, instead of going home, I was like, yo, let's go to Africa. And, you know, I didn't even get a break. I just released and refreshed and rejuvenated out there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there was a studio, you know, yeah. available. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, my boy V Script was like, yo, I got you. I already know everybody who uh, to hit. And we're going to make magic. Trust me. And... Here we are now with two albums. It's gonna be a double project. Wow. Um, it'll all make sense later, and then it all makes sense. And I'm just excited to have a team of people around. Mm. You know what I mean? Over the years, I, I've yeah, I've realized that that's the most important to have a brotherhood, you know, sisterhood, whatever it may be, but just a village. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's that's what keeps it fun. Okay. I Jovi, I'm gonna let you cook in a second, but <laughs> I have I have like Let's get some it. serious questions because like you have been the pioneer of independence and in R&B music, Let's and go. I don't think you get enough credit for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. like, talk about grind. talk about being independent yeah. and independent for as long as you have. It's yeah. like how has how has being an independent artist changed over yeah. the last few years for you? So it shifted, you know, in the beginning when I was first releasing Born to Sing Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, The Rebirth. It wasn't necessarily the cool thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, it was actually frowned upon by a lot of the producers and a lot of people you work with because they look at it like the major labels, how I'm going to get my bag. Like, if I get this song to you, you know what I mean, as an independent artist, you know what I mean? But as they realized and the times have shifted, now that just means that we have a lot more ownership, we have a lot more say, and when the song actually does start to make money, rather than still being unrecouped, it's already in the green. Mm. You know, so I think it was something that I didn't know what was gonna, you know, what was gonna happen, like with the streaming and slowly things were taken away, and the independent artist has now become the popular to where the major artist is like, yo screaming I want my independence you know and for me it's been independence day year round so you know yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. every day's a holiday on every this day's a, yeah. a, a firework and you're definitely one of those artists who can and I think you said this you can tour mm -hmm. all year round yeah how does that feel to have fans who will show up for you because it's one thing yes. to make the music and put it out but like yes. people have to be yeah. Have to be invested in what you're saying and no, how you're real. saying it. How that's that that's hard earned money. You know, I don't I don't, you know, take it lightly at all because even me, I got we got bills. Everybody got bills. So for people to take their hard earned money and, you know, consistently show support, you know, pull up to the vents, the um, you know, the merch tables, you know, supporting the music some people ain't just streaming some people is buying thank you if you buying the music because that really make a big difference so if mm -hmm. you actually go to purchase on the itunes store i love you even more <laughs> <laughs> but you know i look at it like yo as long as they gonna keep pouring into me i'm pouring it right back in a way that is reinventive to myself you know the same way michael jackson was always a different artist different energy different chapter every album i try to give people something totally different so when you come to this tour it's not gonna be the same tour you know so not only are we here to sing the songs together but i'm also gonna present them in a new way so that you can mm. feel like it's your first time hearing them and singing them that's dope, man. Singing them with your whole chest, though, because like I said, that might <laughs> <The whole. laughs> be on, okay? If you haven't no. gotten a chance to see this man live, do that. Quick, fast, and in a hurry for yes, real, because yes. the vocals are top-notch. Let's go. Thank you. Top-notch, for sure. But not only are the vocals doing what they do, but that pen game, 
It's crazy. It's got to go. The pen has to dance. The pen game goes crazy, not only for to. yourself, but for other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how did it feel going from songwriter mm -hmm. to now performing yes. your own joints? What was that transition like? Man, you know, I had to learn who Eric Bellinger was, the artist, as opposed to Eric Bellinger, the, you know, aspiring musician that likes every single song. Mm -hmm. I like all the songs, you know what I mean? But there's a such thing as an Eric Bellinger song as much as there's a Justin Bieber song, a Usher, a Chris Brown, like everybody has their sound, their brand. And I think when you tap into, you know, who you are, it's a lot easier to identify and, and not be mad at, you know, the success of a song that goes somewhere else. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of interviews is like, yo, what song did you wish you would have kept? It's like, nah, that song was for that artist, for that specific time, in his range and register, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I look at it like now that I've, you know, done a lot of time for myself, I've learned more about myself mm -hmm. and, you know, what I think the people um, want to hear from me, you know what I mean? So it makes it easier, like, okay, this is my target and this is who I am. And I, I always play within those, those borders without, you know, going too crazy. You know, of course I can do like a rock song or, mm -hmm. a, you know what I mean? But I like to feed my community because my community feeds me. You know, Eric, you... I, I one thing that shocked me when I saw you were actually on like the writing team for um for that Big Sean song. I think it was called Precision. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And I was like, I, I mean, I know your pen is crazy, and you you you're in R and B, and you know you're well known in that world. But when I saw like you're yeah. in a rapper's studio session, and it's like, yeah. what what does it take to get into another genre, you mm -hmm. know, like what what do you have to do as a writer yeah. to like put yourself in a in a rapper yeah. shoes or a rock artist shoes? Man, so I truly look at it like the beat defines the genre. Mm. As a songwriter, I can write to a piano, chord, progression, classical, I could do a guitar, I could do a metronome. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the song is gonna remain the same. The story I'm telling, even the melodies. I'm gonna try to freak the melodies in any type of beat, but if you have some heavy metal guitar, it's a rock song, you know what I mean? And if you have them 808 Atlanta style drums, it's like a hip hop urban song, you know? But the music really defines the genre to me. So when I got in there on, on that song with Big Sean, I was, Shooting my shot, like psh, psh, I'm playing around. Yeah, you know, yeah. I wasn't even. <laughs> we did another hook to it at first, and then I just was doing that, messing around. And my boy Joe was like, "No, lay that, lay that." Yeah, lay that. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then that's the one he wanted. I'm like, "See, it's like, it's not. It's I don't know. Unit. It's a universal language." Yeah. R&B Only Live is a show that will take you on a journey of R&B music from past, present, and future. We bring together the best of the genre with our all-female DJs, talented hosts, and electrifying energy all night long. Get tickets to the tour now at rnbonly.com/calendar and vibe with a room full of R&B lovers.